Good morning and welcome to our info session hosted by the School of Commerce. My name is Somilan Dinge and I'm from the marketing team. Joining me today is Sarame, who's our head of school. We've got Lizre Bota, who is our head of department. Uh, we've got Shara, who is also a head of department. And Mutale uh, Kobo, who is our senior program manager. Welcome, guys. And uh, before we get on to the program or agenda of the day, I just want to do a little housekeeping. Uh, there is an interactive chat box on the side. I see Tanzile has already commented. Uh, so you can just say hi, tell us where you're joining us from. We'd love to hear from you. We also have um, an ask a question box, which is at the bottom of the screen. This is where you can post all your questions and we will read them during our session and we will do our utmost best to answer them. And if we can't at the moment, we'll take your uh, contact details and we'll get back to you. Um, we also have polls that are right uh, are running presently. So we've got questions for you. If you want to be contacted for registrations or admission, please vote yes. And also please specify which um, qualifications you would like us to contact us, uh, contact you for. And we also have a call to action button. This is where if you click there, it will take you to our website. This is where you can check out all our courses, go through our schools and all the other information that you want to know. And before, without wasting time, I'm going to hand over to Sarami, who seems a little frozen, um, but let's see how it goes. Um, and he will talk about the vision of the school. So over to you, Sarami. Thank you, Samila. Can you hear me? Am I still frozen? <laughs> yes, you still look fro frozen. From my side. and Lizre, I think you guys, I can, I can move around, isn't it? Okay, I will, you. I will quickly share uh, my screen, uh, the presentation for you. Okay. Cool you. Got the right one. Here we go. All right. Thank you. It's so pleasure to see all of you here today, folks. Uh, and I mean, you took your time to join us this morning. Thank you very much for that. Like uh, Samila said, I'm Saramram Sarjana. I'm the head of school in the School of Commerce. And to start off, let me just thank you again to, to be part of the this uh, ceremony. Or I mean, I call it ceremony because you took your time to be here. And for us to show you in terms of what we offer, what is the school about, you know, how to contact us, I think it's very critical before you start your studies with us. Uh, so Mila, can you go to the next slide, please? All right. Just before we start off, I think it's very important that you, you see the whole picture in terms of where Mel Park fits in from Stadio's perspective. So Stadio, as you know, it's a company that is listed on the GSE. Maybe some of you don't know, or you know, you know. Uh, a company listed on GSE has subsidiaries. So we have Melpac, we've got Stadio Education, and then we've got After. The reason why I always say this to so many induction that I've got is uh, sometimes people direct queries to Stadio or After or another Stadio, which is also a Stadio a, a University or a higher education. And from that point of view, you know, it's like you don't know where you belong. So I, we thought as 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 Melpac as institution, we have to onboard you and then tell you how, you know, in terms of communication, how things are done. So Melpac is on its own. It's a it's a company on its own, a higher education institution. We've got Stadio. Stadio used to have other, you know, other companies or brands, which is SBS, Embury, Lysoft, and Prestige. All of those entities are now part of Stadio, which is now one entity. And then we also have after after deals with film uh, and, 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 and other qualifications. So please make sure that when you contact us as Melpac, direct us in terms of uh, the structure that I shown you, which is very critical. Okay, you are here because we chose you. 
and then you choose us. So it's a matter of us meeting each other halfway. And why am I saying that it is important, you know, where you, which school are you belonging to? We are Mill Park School of Commerce. Uh, our qualifications as Lisa and Shara will, will continue. It's, we've got BBA, we've got BCom, and our focus for today will be on the DLO, distance learning online. That is very critical that you understand the difference between those two modes. When did we start? We started in 1997. Mel Park has been around almost more than 20 years ago. We've got a campus in, in, in Cape Town. And we have qualification that can, you know, start from NQF level 5 until doctorate, which is NQF level 10. What School of Commerce is all about? So, Mila, can you go back to the previous slide, please? Sorry. <laughs> We, I want to emphasize the point that we, we offer opportunities in the field of commerce. That is very critical as part of our, our strategy. How we do that, we make sure that it, everything is flexible, accessible, and we support you throughout your whole journey. Flexibility means you can start with us anytime you want to join. Uh, let's say, for example, you missed cycle one or you missed semester one or you miss any cycle, we, you come to us and say, you know, here's the next cycle that you can join in terms of our qualifications. And then we, you, we make sure that during that period that you, you are with us, you can have your qualification that we have. Obviously there are rules and uh, procedures that we have to, you know, understand in terms of how a qualification is designed. Accessible, we have students from USA, we've got students from Canada, Australia, and I saw one of the comments from someone say, I'm from Florida, which is in South Africa. So we are all over the world. What makes us proud is the fact that we adapt. You can write your exams wherever you are. Obviously, we have controls in place to make sure that you are comfortable with those things. And that makes sure that, you know, when we promise you, uh, a service we deliver. Uh, for me, I think that is very critical accessibility in terms of where you are, uh, you know. And then the other point that I want to make is supportive. We've got student support that make sure that when you come to us, we attend to you on a timely manner. Uh, I see another point here. Pule says, I'm joining from Cape Town. It's good, Pule, to hear from you. So it shows we are not located in terms of location or, you know, in terms of you are here, someone is there, we are all together here. We support and then we ensure that we offer long life business education solutions. We've got corporate clients who always come and then we offer the service. Uh, you, all of you or some of you or half of you or, you know, we, we always make sure that we, we support uh, students that come to us irrespective of the background. Uh, next slide, Samila. Uh, Joyce is from Kimberley. Yes, Kimberley. Uh, uh, I was saying before we started the session with my colleagues, the other one is Cape Town. No, no, Mukalukom, who's our senior program manager, he's in Johannesburg. Sometimes she goes to Vernachi. Shaira is in Johannesburg and this is Cape Town. That's how we connect. Uh, and we are proud of that. We are proud to say we, you know, we innovate education in terms of connection, in terms of connection. And like I said, we are all over. And then that's how uh, education should be. Uh, we, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know, we have another business school, which is headed by Dr. Kubas Kostheze. He's a pioneer of industrial revolution. To say, guys, as we evolve, as we go into this new era of technology, how best can we use it? And for us, it was a great opportunity to say, let's make education something different from the way it used to be. Myself, I'm sorry to take long, but let me just tell you myself, my own story. 
I used to go to a class where we sit literally in the classroom and then we have to sign a register. And then if there's a class test on every Wednesday and you miss it, it's a problem. And that class test, if you unlike it, 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 it has to count maybe towards your semester mark or your year mark, then you, unfortunately you can't do anything. But evolution as we go changes those things. Now you have a time to say, as you can have your online test open, let's say from Monday until, until Friday, a, a day, five days, or Monday to, I mean, it depends on, the, on your module. And then you plan your time around that. You say, you know what, for today I've got two hours to complete this. Can I spare my own two hours to complete this online test? Because the reason why I want to go, I'm sorry, Lisa, you're going to talk about online tests and stuff like that. But I thought maybe I, I need to emphasize the importance of these marks that, you know, sometimes we neglect. Every mark counts. That opportunity that you've got for that two hours that you want to spend on your time, use it. Because it will somehow add you in terms of progressing in your semester or in your uh, year. Obviously, we've got semester max because uh, on DLO, we've got weekly participation. Do that because at the end of the day, it will help you. So we things are changing. And then as things change, let's adapt. For me, that is very important. It comes to our values uh, as Melpac. Our values are our guiding force, things that drive us to connect to, for me, it's like a guiding tool that we use so that all of us can be together. Strive means don't give up, climb high. You can see on Strive, there are mountains, those things, you know, sometimes you think like, can I do this? Can I make it? Sometimes you, you, you doubt yourself. It happens, we are natural, we are human beings. But don't ever doubt yourself. Tell yourself that, you know, this is in my power, in my control. Let me step or climb one step at a time. So that is striving. Uh, we have our own challenges, you know, you, personal life, at work, you know, there's all, I mean, in the house and stuff like that. But one step at a time can make you progress in life. So we always encourage our students, our partners, our staff, everybody that we involve with, to strive because we don't stay at the same uh, at the level that we want us to be. So always step by step. For me, I think it's very powerful uh, value that be, uh, the, the rest can follow. Not to say others are not important, but I think striving means it gives you hope. Because if you don't hope, you don't have hope. We are all hopeless. So for me, that uh, strive is very key. The second one is care. If you don't feel cared by the surroundings, uh, people that you love, people who support you, you will think like you are alone, which is not the case. When you join us, we, we partner with you to, so that you can you know, succeed in, in your career and aspirations and whatever things that you want to achieve in your life. Because life means caring, you can't succeed if people don't care, you know, around you. Uh, for me, that is very important as well. You can see the rainbow uh, as, as shown in that picture. It shows caring. The other one is learn. I'm sure all of us here, we are here because we want to achieve, we want to explore, you want to see other things. Uh, I'm sure everybody, they are tired of this thing that I always say <laughs> during induction. Uh, last, uh, two years ago, there was a lady who was eight years old who graduated and got her PhD. Why? Did she give up? No. There were people who were caring, perhaps. There were people who were pushing her to say, it's not the end of the world. 
we all need to explore uh, and explore other things. That I think for me, that was something that was touching because you know you are you are a pensioner. You have things to worry about. You have kids. You have grandkids. But you have this other one uh, commitment that you want to do, which is empowering yourself. So learning is a lifelong event that will never stop. Even myself, we're all learning. I learn every day. We learn. So I'm happy that you guys are here so that we can explore each other and then see how uh, the world evolves. One of the challenges that we had, uh, uh, I think before COVID, uh, we had a discussion with our students at the campus where we we had, uh, it was called Entrepreneur Week, where we said, guys, we are here. What can we do differently? Guys, uh, people came with different ideas. Can I sell this? Can I do this? You know, and that spirit, it has to live with us for eternity. Uh, because it shows us that you know, as much as we learn, how can you implement what we are learning? That is very, for me, that is very important that, you know, as much as we learn, how can you implement? It's tough and understand, you know, things are not easy. We are here to create solutions. I think that is also important because if you don't create solutions, we might as well do nothing. You know, the purpose of learning is about creating solutions to tackle problems that we are facing. The last value, I think, is being real. Uh, be yourself. Be authentic. If you believe that, Sarame, I'm not happy about this thing or the way the lecturer goes or whatever, reach out to us. Don't wait until a week before the exam and then you come, you know, you say, hey, I didn't you know, understand how the process unfold. I didn't understand the process. I didn't understand the risk. I didn't understand this letter that you guys are giving me. Why am I getting this letter? So please engage with us so that uh, the journey can be uh, easy. All of us can be enjoying. It can be pleasant. I think that is uh, very important that you guys engage with us. So the, today's session, I told the, 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 the colleagues earlier on that let's be interact, interactive. If you there's something that you want to share or you want you have a comment, I can see comments are coming up this side. Please don't wait. Let's be interactive. Stop me while I'm talking or when Shara or Lizre or Nono or Mikalehomo or Somila. Let's have that interaction because this is a point where you engage with us and then we give you information you will learn from us. I learn from you as well. So if you think, guys, can I approach something like this? It's up, it's your platform. So I want this to be interactive session, folks. Um, let's not make it like, okay, it's a presentation and then at the end you, let's interact with each other. Stop us, let's, as we talk, you know, ask questions. Let's, let's have that conversation because this is the platform where we said, let's have a conversation with us, with you, and, and see how we can help you so that when you, when you come and join, life is, you know our qualifications, the prerequisites, the modules, the study modes, all those things so that it's easy for you. So, Somila, over to you. Okay, okay. no, not Somila. I think I'm going to hand over to Shaira. So, please engage let's see if there's something that you want to more learn more or understand more please we are here let's see how it goes over to you shaira hi everyone can you hear me yes okay great thanks as sarami said welcome to the session it's so nice to, uh, to have you guys here on a saturday morning with us joining us um, I really hope we answer all your questions and you interact with us today so that we can uh, get to know what queries you may have and we can assist you along the way. All right. My name is Shaira Sakur. I am the head of department in the School of Commerce and I look after specifically the BCom. So I'm going to be talking to you about our BCom. 
So BCom is an NKF level seven qualification, right? That means it goes up to third year, okay? And what our BCom does is it provides a wide range of managerial skills in all main areas of commerce and industry. So we have our different streams with regards to our BCom, and we've tried to make our BCom comprehensive enough in order to cover the basic pr principles and foundations that are needed in a Bachelor of Commerce. So we cover our accounting, we cover marketing, we cover economic, and we cover our quantitative skills. Okay, like I mentioned, we have different uh, streams with regards to the BCom. So we have a wide range and a variety and options for you. So I'm gonna go through the different streams that are available. We have a BCom with a major in banking. So if you're looking for a foundation in banking, or you want a career in a, as a manager or a specialist in the banking sector, then we have that qualification for you with our BCom in, with a major in banking. Then we have banking and investment. So this is where students can get a little bit of both. So if you're interested in investments and banking, we have that flexibility so that you can have both investments and banking where we cover majors in bank, banking and the investment modules. Then if you're only interested in asset management, right? In, then we have just the investment management. So you can either opt for the BCom Banking, Investment and Banking, or just the Investment Management major. Okay, then we also have our short-term insurance, a very popular stream that we have is our short-term insurance, right? This one does have a de designation with the Insurance Institute, right? So if you do complete it with us, right, we are affiliated with the Insurance Institute. And if you're looking to be a risk broker or an insurance risk manager, right, then the short-term insurance stream is for you, okay? Right, then we have compliance and risk management. Another very popular stream is our compliance and risk management. So if you are interested in being a risk officer, a compliance officer, or working in the compliance and risk space, we have our BCom in compliance and risk management. It covers our specialist modules in our risk management. We have compliance techniques and strategies. We have, um, financial crime, fraud examination. So there's very interesting modules that are available on our compliance and risk management. Then we have our BCom credit. So if you are interested in credit transactions, we have the BCom in credit, right? We have financial planning. Financial planning, also a very popular stream. Um, if you are interested in working in the financial sector and, and interested in financial planning, right? Remember, financial planning is a very highly regulated environment. And there are a lot of uh, laws that you need to be able to abide by. So we cover all of that within our BCom in financial planning. We have our BCom general. So if you are not so sure in terms of where you want to spe uh, specialize, you're not so sure in terms of which field you want to go into, we do have our BCom general, right? And this then covers your accounting modules, your marketing, your economic, and your quantitative skills, okay? Then we also have our BCom in taxation. We're one of the very few universities that actually offer a BCom in taxation. So this is where you major in taxation from your undergrad, right? We are also associated with the South African Institute of Tax Practitioners. So once you are done with us, you can continue on with them to complete your NQF level eight modules that are needed. And then you can become a tax technician or a tax professional or have a tax designation with the South African Institute of Tax Practitioners. So if you're interested in becoming a specialist in tax, then um, that BCom taxation is for you. So th these are all the BCom streams that we offer, right? If you have any questions, you're welcome to get in touch with us so that we can help you and assist you along the way. Okay, um, that's all from me in terms of the BCom. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Lizre, who is going to take you through our BBA options. Thank you, Shaira. I hope that you can hear me. I'm sure that you can. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. My name is Liz Ibuena. I'm the head of the department at the School of Commerce, specifically the BA. So Shara and I work hand in hand. Like Shara already mentioned, our undergraduate degree are in level seven degree, and the BBA specifically focuses on management, leadership, ethics, and entrepreneurship. It also gives you a wonderful foundation should you want to continue postgraduate studies at an NQS level eight, whether that is a computer or an honors. 
On the next slide, you'll see um, some of our streams, our different qualifications. We've got a HR or human resources. Again, a wonderful, beautiful qualification should you want to know more about HR, deal with labor relations, workplace relations. Um, it really helps get you in the world of work, the world of commerce, specializing in HR. Um, we are currently also busy looking at the qualification and we are aligning it with SAPDP, which is um, part of uh, South Africa's professional designation for HR professionals. Then with our BBA in Majorette Marketing, the same concept there just with marketing. So again, a wide range of subjects specifically focused on making sure that you are able to either work for yourself or then work in the industry as a marketing professional. We've got exciting subjects like visual communication, branding and advertising, digital marketing, which all of us students like. So if you have a strong sense of business, but you're also very artistic and very creative, this is a wonderful degree to follow and pursue. Then we have our BBA channel. A BBA channel is a very good qualification study if you're not exactly sure where you want to go in business because you haven't been exposed to everything. So what is very important here is that all of our first year BBA and even BCOM subject look more or the same and they expose you to different areas of business. So in your first year, you sort of get the background, get the exposure, and then as you move to your second and your third year, you are able then to specialize. So let's say you enroll for BBA general and after the first year you decide, sure, I love marketing. Then from your second year, you can go and you can specialize in marketing. So there are wonderful opportunities for you to build, to decide on your journey and to decide on your career. And I think that what Sarami also said in the beginning, we are absolutely focused on giving students flexibility, accessibility, so that at the end of the day, you can either work for yourself, become an entrepreneur, or you can go into the world of confidence, you know, everything that you need to know to add value to your company and obviously for us to society. Okay, let's look at our next slide. We really want to take just a moment to talk about um, distant learning and learning online. Um, our colleague, who is our senior PM and absolutely a star, is experiencing some technical difficulties. She's just sent a message. So I'll be taking you through her slides and answering any questions on the difference between distant learning and learning online. Samila, so I'm not sure if there are more slides to share. Just give me a heads up. Otherwise, I will just share with the students the difference between distant learning and distant learning online. Okay, so let's have a conversation. Let's share. So at Milford Education, we've got two modes of study, which we call distant learning and distant learning online. So this is not a typical university where you have to go to class, right? Because we're focusing on flexibility, because we want to keep flexibility to everybody, it doesn't really matter where we sit. So we've seen here on the side, we've got students from Durban, we've got students from Cape Town. I myself was sitting in Pretoria this morning. I know Sarami said um, Cape Town, which I would love, but I'm in Pretoria with my dogs. So if they start barking, you guys know that I'm not lying. I am at home. And I think that's what makes it so wonderful. So whether you decide to study distance learning or distance learning online, you can really do it from the comfort of your house or your office or your study, wherever you feel more comfortable. All right, so if we look at distance and distance learning online, the slides on your screen at the moment. Thank sorry, you. Lisa. Yes. Sorry to, to disturb you. Um, I just want you to take note of your mic. You keep moving. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if the students can hear you properly. Like you keep moving. So just, I think it's, uh, it's the headphone. So if you My can just. Phones. Yes. So if oh, you can I keep apologize. it closer to you and try not to <laughs> move so that um, the students can hear properly. I think we can All right, thanks here. guys. You are so welcome to put it in the chat if you can't hear me. Here I am talking and I assume everybody can hear me. 
I apologize. Okay, so Temba also said the sound. Crystal also said it's the sound. Can everybody hear me now? I saw now this little perfectly. button on my earphones. I'm not sure if that's better. We can hear you perfectly now. Thank you, Liz. Oh, wonderful. All right, brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, so like I was saying, I'm going to take you through the difference between distant learning and distant learning online. And I, we also, I think this is also a very good exercise to say, um, guys, we are, you know, in the era of technology. Sometimes technology lets us down and we just have to roll with the punches. I think as South Africans, we're also exposed to ESCOM and load shedding. I'm sure some of you are sitting in load shedding. Our colleague Nono, um, who would have loved to chat to you this morning, is also sitting in load shedding. But I said to our colleagues yesterday, it builds resilience. We have a set of skills that nobody else in the world has, and we roll with the punches. So there you go, Crystal. I can see that, that you feel the same way. Okay, so let's turn back in the comfort of our home, hopefully with technology and sound working. Let's look at the difference between distant learning and distant learning online. All right, so distant learning, um, I always tell students, this is at your own pace. Um, you have a little bit more, more time to complete. So if you are an adult learner, which most of you are, and you feel that you don't need real direction and guidance, you have your study material and you're able to do it on your own with, with um, some assistance from your online lecturer or tutor, Distant learning is definitely the way to go. So we call it self-study. It is less interactive. Um, you've got six modules a year. Um, it's offered in two semesters. So the two semesters are between 10 and 12 weeks long. For a subject, you've got one assignment and two online tests, depending on the structure of your subject. So my tip here is once you get, once you registered, once you have your model um, and once you are online on my mobile, go to the specific subject and then go and download your assessment guidelines. The assessment guidelines is a document that tells you exactly how that subject is going to be assessed. Usually it is one assignment and two online tests at a first year level. And then as you go to third year level, there's only one online test, again, depending on the subject. You also have one exam. And then we have interactive live sessions that we run through MSN Teams for your assignment and for your exam. And we call this overview. So just before you hand in your exam, you have an assignment overview with your lecturer and your tutor to show you how to approach the assignment. And then the same with the exam. So just before your exam, you have a session, they run through um, your topics. Usually our subjects are structured into six topics. And we sort of ask if there's anything in the study material that you're unsure about. And we really try to prepare you for the exam. So that is distant learning. It is a traditional form. It is very successful. We have a large number of students on this platform or on the study mode, if you will, especially working students that don't need a lot of direction. They're able to download the study plan, set up their study environment and study um, by themselves. And then obviously, if they need help, we've got a lecturer, 24-7 tutor. Um, so you're always able to reach out for help. So we call this self-study. Distant learning online is a bit more structured. This is typically for a student, whether you're working or not working, that needs guidance and a little bit on with more direction. In other words, you get sent a message on a Monday to say, hi, guys, you've got an online test to complete. Please don't forget. You get a message to say this week we're focusing on assignment preparation. So it's a lot more interactive and it's a lot more structured. So I think that's the biggest difference between distant learning and distant learning online. And depending on you, depending on the type of student you are, the type of studying and enjoyment you get from your studies, you would know which is the better fit. With distant learning online, you take four modules per year um, and it is offered in an eight week cycle. So again, if you look at distant learning, it's every 12 weeks, but in um, distant learning online is every eight weeks and you take one subject at a time. So, for example, you would take accounting and then for the next eight weeks, you just focus on accounting. Very structural, structured, very interactive, getting you over that line. You write your exam and then you start with the next subject. 
because the, 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 the subject is so structured, you get three assignments, three mini assignments and three mini online tests. And that is just to make sure, again, it's structured that you've worked through topic one, you get an online test. You work through topic two and topic three, you have an assignment. And that sort of just helps you um, absorb, if you will, all the knowledge that you need from that specific ac um, accounting or that specific subject, if you will. You then have one exam. There's discussion and participation throughout, which is compulsory. In other words, part of learning, part of structured learning is to read the topic, read the content, and then share with your colleagues or comment on what your colleagues have said or reading an article and internalizing that article and say, but this is what I think. So there's structured learning in the form of discussions. And then depending on the subject, you get two to three live sessions. So for a subject like accounting, we've got three sessions in order to assist the students. So you get your first session talking about the subject, having some activities, making sure you get a hold of topic one and topic two. Then we have a typical assignment overview, which we look at assignments that have passed because the, um, these are mini assignments and the big one coming up. And then we also have an exam prep and exam prep session. So that at a very high level is the difference between distant learning and distant learning online. It's essentially the same subject. It's the same accounting. It's just offered differently because students might want to engage with the study material on a different level. So if you have any questions at this point, I see Nono or Motlali Homo is online. You are so welcome to ask her any questions and she'll be there to answer. Okay, so again, just the differences between DLO intakes and cycles. And this is where I sort of want to come in and say good news. Um, our cycle one for DLO has already passed and the students are already busy. But that does not mean that you cannot register. That does not mean that you cannot start your student journey. Because unlike the DL with only two intakes a year, semester one and semester two, we've got four intakes a year on DLO, which helps a lot with our students when you have to plan your time um, around your kids or your studies or your work and also around your finances. So if you've missed cycle one, it's not a problem. You can still register for cycle two up until the 14th of March when our registration for cycle two closes. But then again, good news, you still have cycle three and cycle four. So you don't wait. You have to wait for next year to start your student journey, to start studying. You can start immediately. So again, why do we have these intakes? It is really just to accommodate, um, to make it more flexible, to make it more accessible to you. Um, with the DL, you'll see there's only two intakes, but you can you don't have to wait for second semester. You can start with INDBS and BNUM immediately. The next ones that are running is the 24th of April and the 15th of May. So even if you are DL, you can take INDBS and BNUM on DLO and there's an opportunity for you to start. So you can still register today. And on the DLO side, you can see that those are the subjects coming up in cycle two. Um, we also have cycle three and cycle four. You will have your own set of exam dates, so you're not missing out on anything. Next slide, Sumala. All right, so thank you, Nono. Yeah, she just put the dates for you again, so did you know exactly? So for INDBS, INDBS intake two, the close of registrations is the 14th of March. And for BNUM, close of registrations is the 18th of April, which means whether you're DLO or DL, you can start with these two subjects on DLO immediately. And it shows you the start and the end date of both. You would typically start with INDBS on the 21st of March and end on the 24th of April. And what is very important to note about INDBS, there is no exam. Your assessments throughout the course counts towards a final mark. And that's then the same for BNAM. You will start immediately after INDBS. You will start with BNAM on the 25th. You'll end on the 15th of May. And again, there's no exam for BNAM and you are able to be assessed on the work and the quizzes that you do in BNAM. So again, you can start immediately, you can start registering immediately. And we also encourage students to take these two subjects together so that you write them off and continue. In cycle three, if um, cycle two is not working for you and you want to take a bit more time, it's the beginning of the year with um, 
trying to adult with kids and, and work and finances, you do have an option to only start in cycle three. And the close of registration for that is the 28th of June. So if you don't want to do cycle two, that stops on the 14th of March registration, you can always do introduction to business management or applied financial accounting on the 28th of June is the close of registration. And it runs from the 4th of July to the 28th of August. And that is DLO cycle three, similar. Then in cycle four, again, the subjects that are there is business law, business mathematics, principles of microeconomics, depending on you whether you do BBA or BCom. So, for example, business mathematics are only for, for BCom students on top of BLaw and PMIC. The BBA students, if you look at something that we call a fact sheet or your information pack that you can find on our website, you'll know exactly which subject is correct for your stream. For example, the BBA students that only do law and microeconomics, they do not do business mathematics. But the close of registration for cycle four DLO is the 22nd of August, and it will run from the 29th of August. And then you have various exam dates. And what that means is that these dates are on different dates so the DL and DLO students write on the same, they write the same subject, but on different dates, which is again good news because you can plan your exams, you can decide what subjects to take and what exam dates suit you best. And that is cycle four DLO. So um, for the distant learning students, um, semester one has unfortunately closed. Like we said previously, you can still start your studies. You don't have to wait for second semester. You can still do INDBS and BNUM now, get it done and dusted and out of the way. And then you can also start registering immediately for semester two. So you don't have to wait for May, June, July, which is usually our, when we register for semester two. You can start today, plan your life and register immediately for semester two. That starts in July. And next slide, Sumila. Okay. So I hope that sort of helps you with the difference between DL and DLO, the different semesters, the different intakes. It is a lot of information to absorb. So we are definitely here to help you. If you've got any questions, please let us know um, so that we can answer those questions. Alternatively, all this information is on our website. I think the best place to go is to ask a question here answer ask a question or answer one of the polls so that we can get somebody to contact you to answer those questions if you don't feel comfortable asking it here that's why we have these sessions so that we have consultants standing by to reach out to you and to help you alternatively like i mentioned you're so welcome to go to our website all of the information is there you can click on the school of commerce very important then you'll see all of our undergraduate qualifications and then you are looking for something called the information pack or a fact sheet and all of the information will be available on there okay so let me just quickly ask any questions um i don't see any questions so i assume either everybody is okay or you still need to digest the information i'm not sure if one of my colleagues wants to add something Shira, Surami, maybe no, no, I'm not sure. Sumela. Um, no, no, we've got questions on ask a question box and no, no has been so gracious by answering all of the questions um, at the, on the ask a question box. So if you guys have similar questions or I'm not sure if you guys can see the questions from your side, but um, Nono has done her utmost best to answer all the questions that we have on our Ask a Question box. And I see people have already um, voted on our, um, on our polls. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And Crystal says, fully covered. Thank you. So um, that's, that's really great news. It's, it looks like the information that we were able to give uh, is is has been very helpful for everyone. I'm gonna call um, up Serami um, before we we go off. Maybe he has a thing to add or Shira. Wow. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Serami. Okay. Yeah. 
I think as we see, uh, there are no specific questions, I think. Uh, on the pools, uh, ask a question, uh, so Mila, do we have any specific question, perhaps? Ask no. the question. Okay. No, and I'll ask a question box. Nono has answered all our questions. Yeah. So, guys, this is the first time maybe you engage with us in this platform. And like Lisa said, if there are more questions you want to digest information, please feel free to, to reach out to us. And I'm not sure if you can show the email address that, you know, people normally contact us uh, at the end. It's uh, student support at melpark.ac.za. And if maybe you've got more, you, you want to follow up on something that perhaps, you know, it's not clearly covered, please uh, contact us. But uh, let me thank you guys for the opportunity to be here today. Lizre, Shaira, Somila, thank you so much for the efforts. Um, maybe if you can, there it is, support at milpark.ac.za, that's our email address. Uh, if there are more follow-up questions, I believe there will be more, obviously, because of the choice of modules, I think that's important. The timetabling. When can I start with uh, NDBS? When is the next intake? When is the next circle? Prerequisites. All those things are the stuff that definitely we will assist you in terms of planning your journey with us. Thanks, Samila. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for attending our session. Um, what we will do from a marketing side, we will send through the slides uh, in case you guys need them. And we'll also, if you need to access this recording, you can use the same link that you use to join. So we'll also include that in the email that we sent. So thank you very much for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thank you to the academics, really appreciate it. And um, thank you, Nono, for answering all our questions. Um, so um, I think we're done for today and we can call it a day and have a lovely weekend. It was lovely being with you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.